you're saved. Uh, Romans 10 and 1. I need to do a little meeting when I get finished. Uh -huh. Romans 10 and 1. Hello? Hello? Romans 10 and 1. Listen. Our key, my heart's desire and prayer to Allahim for Yashara is that they might be saved. For what reason? I bear them record that they have a zeal of Allahim, but not according to knowledge. We talked about before range of information. Y'all hear me? Range of information is that definition when we start talking about knowledge. Y'all hear me? This is why we say in such a dire situation, lack, deplic um, being depleted, and just actually just not having. And the truth of the matter is, um, we've started. We've started to kind of grasp or start to get a concept of what it is we need to know, and start to put us on the right path. But we don't want to get kind of sidetracked by all the other indie windows. Um, everybody here has been taught on how they should do, how they should walk, and how we should maintain. And we don't want to um, lose that based upon a couple of liberties that we found, um, regardless of what you find that you're able to do or not do, it does not change the expectations that's been set for us. We learn by the um, Shaul that uh, furthermore, as you have received of us, how ye ought, which are expected, so you can abound. Y'all got me? Even when he talked about a tree, when he established the trees, he said, who seed? So it already has expectations. It already has an ideal. A seed doesn't just create of itself. It comes from a source of being. So it has an ability based on where it proceeded from. That's the same thing. We proceeded from Allahim. So we have knowledge. It's just a matter, it's just a matter of us actually putting it into a concept and making sure we maintain the good works. Um, that's my concern, making sure we're making it. Nothing we're doing, nothing that we plan to do is more important than us being saved. Y'all got it? Um, I want to make sure that we always keep that before us, before anything is nothing. Don't let anything from husband, wives, kids, kinfolk, friends, job, sickness, health, I mean, whatever cause, whatever you can get, can make. I mean, even if it's just, I don't, I don't care what it is, don't let it come in and be a distraction from what our total goal is. And that's to make sure we get into Allahim's kingdom. All of us in here living and watching and are going to die. Yeah, that's the inevitable. Meaning there's no way for you to get away from that. You can make that an expectation. That's an expectation everyone will meet. That's an expectation you cannot fail to meet. You will die. I don't care how healthy, how well, what you eat or don't eat and what you drink, um, how well you keep yourself, how well you learn to um, secure yourself as far as defense with weapons or just hands-on-hand -hand combat, you're still going to die. The only thing that we can avoid is where we go. Y'all got me? The place we all need to avoid is eternal damnation. Y'all got me? At the book of Mark. Mark Listen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the Aritz, and preach the Amat to every creature. Y'all hear that? And preach. Well, we'll say preach the. He said, Well, preach the truth. You can use that or the Dabarim, I mean, which is all good. Because we're going to preach, we'll look at truth. Y'all hear me? Hold what you got uh, since he's used that, since you made that statement. See the book of your Ukanon, chapter 18. Is it me or is it mine? Because I got around my neck. Right under my neck. So y'all gonna blame it on me? You gonna blame it on the sign, but you ain't gonna blame it on the boogie. Alright. 
ja Ukenai. Ja Ukenai, um, 18. Uh, let's see, 28. Let's see what happens. Her uh, our key is hard desire and pray to Allah he is that we might be saved because he bear us witness that we had a zeal which could be an enthusiasm of Allah he, but not according to knowledge and he talked about what happened because of the ignorance that's what we don't want to do and that was the purpose of the uh, Dabarine coming so that we wouldn't be ignorant you got me that would do two things that keep you from being in a, in a, in a, a situation of being condemned also keep you in a situation where you're inexcusable. Y'all got it? When you're not ignorant, it should keep you in a situation or get you out of a situation from being blamed. And it should also get you in a situation where there's no excuse. When we read in the second chapter of the book of Romans, he said, thou art in, meaning you're not ignorant. A lot of y'all do stuff in here, and you're not ignorant. A lot of y'all slick. A lot of y'all real slick. You're slick in your own eyes, but you're not, you're not slick. It's actually dumb. Especially when the Dabarine's been taught to you. It'd be like, remember, try to slick and sleep with one of the kids. You know, just ease and have me a little homosexual relationship with one of these guys in here. You know what I'm saying? Kind of ease and do a little something with the kid. What excuse I'm going to use? Inexcusable. So what excuse are you going to use when you find out things you're doing are already condemned by the book and you've been taught? You're inexcusable. So you get yourself in a situation you can't keep using everything to where we had known, nobody had shown me. I didn't grow up with no example. I be going through things. Everybody going through things. Suck it up. That's your life. It don't change your obligation. When we hear what the Dabarine command us to do, we just have to walk. That got it. You can't keep going with what you had known and how long you've been doing something. That's always one thing I want to use is something I always been doing. To me, that's a dumb excuse. It's more sad than anything. Well, I just all, it's always been wrong. And you know it's wrong, you still do it, which makes you an idiot. Huh? And inexcusable. And we got to get to a point we start looking at, we got to clean this stuff up. Y'all hear me? Why are you on this side? Listen. Yeah, Ukanon 18 and 20. We only make it there. I don't finish up that mark because we were talking about, uh, he said, you know, by going to all the Ritz and preach the mocks. Listen. Then led they Yahusha from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, For what reason? lest they should be defiled, Come on. but that they might eat the Pesach. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this Anus? Yes. They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, what happened? we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Come on. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. What happened? The Yahudim therefore said unto him, Yes. It is not lawful for us to put any anus to death. Come on. That the saying of Yahushua might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Yahushua, and said unto him, Art thou the Malak of the Yahudim? And what happened? Yahushua answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? What happened? Pilate answered, Am I a Yehudi? See, he wanna am I a Yehudi? We quit to name everybody a Yehudi. He has a my Yehudi? He know he's not one. Amazing, every time y'all meet somebody, y'all come and tell me you met one somewhere. Even this man knew, even though he knew our law and knew how to judge it, he knew when he was brought then Take him and judge him according to your law. Having information does not make you just a Yehudi. Isn't that right? It's in D and in Amat. Y'all hear me? You got to have D. It's just not knowing the information. You got to have some D's to rectify it as well. A lot of times we just go and we give things to people because we say, you know, they know about Shabbat. That don't mean nothing. He knew about Shabbat too. He knew about our law. That way he said, you take him and see to it. Listen. Thine own nation and the Rosh Kohan have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Listen. Yahushua answered, my Kingdom is not of this Aritz. Why you know? If my kingdom were of this Aritz, tell them what would happen. Then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Yahudim, but now is my kingdom not from hence. See that? 
He let you know. People that knew the Amat, there's no way they let you guide them. When we read in the book of Corinthians, it told us, I have not, neither ear, neither had entered into the heart, the things that who had prepared for them that love me. People didn't know. They, if he'd have been in his kingdom, there's no way it would have happened. In the 12th chapter of the book of Kazun, it just told you there was war in Shamaim. Isn't that right? And Mikael and his um, Malak, they fought against his um, um, Malachi. They fought against the devil in his. Isn't that right? They don't play. There ain't no way they let it happen. He said, it been my kingdom, my time, my people. There's no way in the world they let me be delivered here. He was signifying because we don't know. Listen. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a Malak then? What happened? Yahushua answered, Thou sayest that I am a Malak. Listen. To this end was I born. Uh -huh. For this cause came I into the Aritz. What happened? That I should bear witness unto the Amat. That? that I should bear witness to the Amat. Tell him what happened. Every one that is of the Amat. The what? Heareth my voice. At the 15th chapter. 15, I'm sorry, 16, 15, the book of Mark. Listen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the Aritz. And I hear go ye into all the Aritz and do what? And preach the Amat to every creature. So did he, was he wrong because he said Amat? He said he came to bear witness of the Amat. Everyone that's of the Amat said they'll hear his Dabarim. So we said, go ye into all the Aritz and preach the Dabarim. The Dabarim is still going to be the Amat. Ain't that right? Hold you, y'all. Y'all prove that, I guess, too. See if that, uh, your Ukanon. One. One. And we'll jump down to about 11. And read down. Other one, get me, uh, Oh, get me your Ukanon. Let me read 14. Listen. And Barashit was the Dabari, and the Dabari was with Allahim, and the Dabari was Allahim. Y'all hear that? As they translated, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was Allahim, and the Word was with Allahim. Saying was going to tell you was in by the sheet. And all things were. Bara. Bara. Which is called created. By him. And. Without him. Was. Not anything bara that was bara. At verse 4. At verse 11. He came unto his own. And his who? Own received him not. What happened? But as many as received him. Gave he who? To them gave he power to become the Ben of Allahim. Because we rejected him. Because of our rejection of him, it opened up the door to the Gentiles. See, this is why all these nations are going to have to turn and look to us. If the falling away of us became the riches to the Gentiles, he said, so what's going to happen when, it when he turns back to us? Y'all understand what happened? Our being put away became the riches of the Gentiles. Just like his death became our riches. Y'all got me? Well, our fall away became their riches. The book said, as he is. Nobody can't get it without us. Nobody can get it without us. It's not possible. We had to be cast away. But it let you know he hadn't cast away the people which he foreknew. Isn't that right? But a blindness fell upon us. There was some snares, some traps that came in on us. Isn't that right? That's the only way they can get it. But now you got to ask yourself, he asked you, What's going to happen now when this man turns back to us? That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Y'all got it? That's a problem for the nation. They better start to wake up and realize that. This man is turning back to his people. He's not going to get rid of his people which he foreknew. There's no way possible. He's got to. He even told us in the book of um, Malachi, he said it concerning the covenant about the wife of our youth. He said, did not you make one? He's, and did not you make one? He said he hate putting away. Well, he put us away. Which means he got to come back and get us. He's got to come back. Who's coming to get you? Okay. 
Come on. Even to them that believe on his name. Listen. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a noose. What do we can take for this? A statement was made by Shaul. Who remember what statement it is? Hearing what he just said. N no divine ruach? No. That which is what? That which is of the arrest is? Is of the arrest? Who got him? What's well, kind of out there? What you going to say? Can anybody remember a statement that Shaul made? Based on what he just said about as many received, as many would receive him, to them gave he power to become the, or gave the authority to become the beings of Allahim and said not of the will of the flesh. What did he tell us? Not Wh what? Which were born. Which were born. Not of blood. Not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Or nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of a noose. Yes. But of Allahim. Thank you, Chris, for picking up the wife there. He been saying it back now. Chris, I mean, nigga said, no, I'm just hearing. Ain't it right, nigga? You just heard it when we heard it, didn't you? So now what are we looking at? But this, was, but this is what we learned. So this statement that Shaul made, we find to be true because he's letting us know because there are other people that can connect themselves to Abraham. And because they can connect themselves to Abraham, these are not the seed of counter to the promise. The people that he done came from and the promise were made to the those that were going to believe him, they were going to keep his dabarim. And they're right, because they're going to hold his dabarim to be amat. Listen. And the dabari was made flesh. So we're going to believe that? Now the dabarim was made flesh. What was the dabarim? Made flesh. The dabarim was made flesh. And what did it do? Dwelt among us. And how did we behold it? And we beheld his glory. As? The glory as of the only begotten of the Abba. Full. Of grace and amat. See that? Full of it. Just told us that the Dabarim was full of amat. Let's, um, let's go look at the 14th chapter of the book of your Ukanon. Your 14 and 1. Listen. Let not your heart be troubled. If you... You believe in Allahim, believe also in me. In, in my Abba's house are many mansions. Or in my Abba's Beth. House, temple, land, home. Listen. If it were not so, what, what you would have done? I would have told you. See that? Amat. Then it's Amat. If it was a lie, I'd have told you. Amat. Listen. I go to prepare a place for you. And? If I go and prepare a place for you. What you going to do? I will come again. To do what? And receive you unto myself. There. Where I am. There. You may be also. What happened? And whither I go, ye know. And? The way ye know. What happened? To my saith unto him. Yeah. My lock, we knoweth not whither thou goest. And? How can we know the way? Tell us how. Yahushua saith unto him. Tell him what he said. I am the way, the amat, and the life. He told her he was the Dabarim. That's what we learned earlier in your Ukanon. He was a Dabarim. But he said he was full of Amat. So when he's made the statement concerning about the Amat, go into all the arrests and preach the Amat, he wasn't wrong. Because the Amat is going to be the Dabarim. And the Dabarim is Amat. That's why I said if it wasn't true, I would have told you. If it wasn't Amat, I would have told you. Y'all got it? That's why he was able to tell Pilate that everyone that's of the, uh, of the Amat, they hear the Dabarim. See, this is what separates or vindicates. This is, this is the thing that we don't actually grasp the concept of. He told you that he's not going to judge you. There's another that's going to judge you. Even the Amat, the Dabarim he speaks, it's going to judge you because it's Amat. That's why it, the judgment is going to be judged. He said, and if I did judge, believe me, my judgment would be just. It's going to be Amat. Because I'm going to judge you according to the Dabarim. So now we're coming back to really look at things that we're doing to really make sure we will want to be careful about what we're doing. Okay? All right. Um, come on back to that March 16, 15. We just kind of jumped over that a little bit for whatever reason. You throw it out and said a mot. So since he said it, make sure we didn't look at the dough we're trying to create or make our own way. It's kind of like when he came to the person with dead. I mean, he came to the person and said, well, your sin be forgiven. 
And they're right. They want to, he said, which is easy? It's just a matter of him. He said, it don't matter. It's just, which is easier? He said, whichever way I can get out, he could have said, you know, go and preach the Davarim. Is the Davarim a lie? Well, I'm not. A mot. You know what I'm saying? Got, if you go and you're going to preach a mot, which is true, then you got to preach the Davarim. So where's the argument going to come in at? See, you, you're changing, you're making up stuff. We're not making up nothing, just telling the truth. You're going to preach a mot. And he get through here, well, he's going to preach the Dabarin. That's better. Is the Dabarin right? It's a mot. But that's what he's going to be preaching anyway. <laughs> Listen. He that believeth and is immersed shall be saved. Yeah. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That's what we got to look at now. That's what we got to start looking at. So you're looking at a lot of people here. When you look at for the basis of what a lot of us have done, we've come in and we've confessed to some things. And we've confessed to some things we're still doing. The purpose of confession is to admit your wrongdoing. Not that you go and become a better sinner. And some of y'all have become more enlightened. I won't even use an uh, order because it ain't to the light. It's to more uh, obscure kashap. Your enlightening is kashap. You got me? For the fact that you haven't changed. You haven't actually learned him. And that's the dangerous part. We're here to actually learn him that he becomes manifest in our behavior and our characters. You got me? As Cuff had told us for as much then that he has suffered for us. What was it again? In the flesh. You're supposed to arm yourself. Likewise, knowledge. That's what Shaul's concerned about. And not according to knowledge. Because we don't have that same mind. You would have the same mind if you kept the same information. The stuff that you guys, you, everybody here, because I'm going to confront some of you guys after service. Some of you are going to, I'm going to confront you. Y'all hear me? I'm going to confront you. And I already know your lie and your scheme and your excuses you're going to use, but I will buy absolutely none of them because your behavior is never acceptable when we know better. Y'all got me? There's never, there's never time for your failure when we know better. There's a difference when you don't know, but when you know, you expect it to do better. There's never time for you to slack and not perform doing what you're doing for whatever lazy, dumb, ignorant excuse you're going, stupid excuse you're going to use. It don't make any sense. It don't make any sense. What excuse I can give y'all for going funny case? Commend adultery, lying, cheating, stealing. Which one I'm going to give? Well, how you get them? And what becomes dangerous, and we start looking at willfully, willfully sinning. Willfully sinning. This is the story. He said, there remains no sacrifice. He don't understand. What can you give for willfully sinning? The whole purpose of him coming and giving us the information as we started so many times in the sixth chapter of the book of uh, Yerukana, 644. I was watching in there. Everybody got to get there. Beat somebody, beat them sinners. Listen. No anus can come to me except the Abba, which have sent me, draw him. What happened? And I will raise him up at the last yume. Then it was written. It is written in the Nabah, and they shall be all taught of Allahim. Every yeah, anus. Those watching in that don't know, just Nabah, not prophet. You know, learn by their prophets. Their prophets is game. They do better spelling the P R O F I T prophet. The being they're gonna spell it as prophet, P R O P H E T prophet is someone that prophesied or that sooth says for God. God is an idol. God is Greek. We don't do these things. These are old behaviors we get away from, but some of us are still working for God. Hmm? Been running for God a long time, and you ain't got tired yet. If you tired, you'll stop. Even Yahushua, when he went, he sat down on the well. Who know why? A tired. How you ain't tired of lying, tired of cheating, tired of swindling, tired of bamboozling, tired of fake hustling? How you ain't tired of going backwards? How you ain't tired of getting caught? How you ain't tired of being busted? That's just bad minds. That's just bad minds. Nothing makes you want to change that you will still stay the rotten wretch you are. 
Some of y'all just, y'all just scare me. Y'all scare me. It's dangerous. Y'all got time in. And it's like, so what have you been doing with your time? What have you been doing with your time? All right. Listen. Every anus, therefore, that has heard and has what? Learned of the Abba. Do what? Cometh unto me. So, and you know the people that's going, that have heard and learned, they're going to come to their mat. And they come to their mat, then this is not going to be a statement going to be talking to them. Shouldn't be no ignorance. That was the whole purpose. The, the, the bar, it told you, it was when all your children shall be taught of me. So they've been taught of me. It's certain things and certain characteristics, certain behavior we shouldn't have. Y'all got it? Are y'all conscious tonight? Like, like I said, ain't nothing more important than our soul being saved. We ain't got nothing on the agenda. We ain't got nothing coming up next month, next week, next hour, 20 minutes, next year. By 20 years from now, that supersedes us being saved. When the man come back here, we want to be delivered. There's a destruction that's coming on this plate. There's a wiping away. There's a destroying this plate. Nobody talking about it. Out on the Pacific, they hadn't been telling y'all. They recorded. They have a buoy out there that record wave heights. They caught one about 67 feet high. 67 feet high. That's, that's a record. There's a storm out on them. Took the water. They record high had been like 59 feet. They said just been sitting back just watching it. That man going to destroy that place, but you ain't got to worry about the water. That man got a whole lot of stuff he got going to come on that place. They're going to build destruction, and at the final end, he's going to burn this place up. Now, how you going to get out of here? White folk building a spaceship, they think they're going to get to Mars. They're not going to tell you why they're building that spaceship to go to Mars. This ain't the first time people thought they could go and leave here and try to go where he at. There's only one way. That's why he told you, I'm a mot. You can't get to him but by me. But just showing you how crooked and deceptive people are, they've been in spaceship and telling you it's for people that want to go stay somewhere else because this place is getting overpopulated. That's their excuse and not actually telling you there's a Allahim. That's why white people are doing what they're doing. Not only them, that's why they crooked Asian, crooked Hispanic, everybody doing what they're doing. They know there's a Allahim. They don't want you to know it. Because if you know there's a Allahim, then you want to look at who did he create. Huh? You still sitting around doing stupid questionnaire. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? What if I land a bunch of done eggs out of him? That's stupid. It's all stupid. Everything he made in creation had the ability to create. An egg cannot create. It's just stupid. It, it's just stupid. And you waste the most time reciting dumb white parables. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? You are an idiot. Who's going to tell an egg to recreate? What can an egg recreate? Another egg? This is the bad science we got. Yeah, when he made man, which came first, the baby or the man? He made a man. Just stop it. When he told you concerning all the green herbs and the trees, he told them whose seed was where? Where's a seed and egg? They're going to talk about the yolk. Go ahead. I know you. Thank you, smart, ain't you? Somebody think, which one of y'all had yolk in your mind? I had one of them. You ain't the only one. Who else had yolk? Somebody trying to look at B. Look at them. If I get one more witness, it'd be three of us. <laughs> but we have to really come back to look at the concept of salvation. That's why we're here. Salvation. We don't want to lose sight of that. Don't want to lose focus of that. Nothing should come in and interfere with that. Salvation. With everything you're doing, with everywhere you're going, with everything you got, if you ain't saved, you're just killing time. Y'all got me? If the only thing you get up there every day to do is to go to work, take care of your kids, and run your home, and salvation is not primary first agenda, or get up to go to school, you're just waiting to go to hell. All you're doing is occupying and you go to hell. You're just like everybody else. And we're supposed to be separate, but doll. You're supposed to be separate from everybody else. The book said for such a high kohan, a rosh kohan, became who? Us harmless, undefiled, but dull from sinners. You should be able to see the difference in us and a sinner. Huh? Sin is a transgression of the law. And he was manifest, what was it to do? You shouldn't have any. A robber come up and say, give me all your money. And you say, here you go, this is all my money. If it's not, what did you do? You lied. It ain't the robber's fault. You're just a liar. Your testimony, your confession was he came, he saved you. Your testimony was he took away your sin. Huh? 
So you lied because you didn't give him all of it, huh? He said, it's all you got? Yeah, but you know you got some more. Stashed away. Some more that's kept. And that's what we've done when we came to him and we called ourselves confessing, saying we wanted to be saved. You kept some things. That's why some of us still got old bad behavior. Because you kept some things. Huh? Y'all all right? You got to surrender. That's a part of putting your hands up. It was a heave offering. We had a heave offering and a wave offering. These people sitting there saying they don't know why. The heave offering. We had offering. We took, we heave. And also it's a sign of submission. Even the police can't tell you, put your hands up. You know why? You're not a threat like this. Put your hands up. Here, you could pull some. Here, you could do some. Here, they said, put your hands up. I want to see your hands. Huh? You know why, too? I can see if you got anything in them. On top of that, you can find out if you're blood guilty. So you get your hands up, we can see if you're blood guilty. blood guilty. A lot of y'all are sitting here to try to crucify the man of Fred. You're blood guilty. We can't be accused of that now. The man been put to death one time for our transgression, our sin, our inabilities, and you're going to go back and you're going to try to crucify him again and bring him to an open shame? What did he have to do to do that? Why would we look at a shame? What would you do to a man that could make him look humiliated? Strip him. Wow, in front of everybody, for real. Wow, humiliate him. What they think they, now they do with football player, basketball player, they make them all strip down to the draw. Weigh in. Strip them down. This is what we do to football players. This is everybody take off your clothes, need you wear. And it ain't even humiliated. He can tell your glory and your shame. Your glory and your shame. It's a shame to be looking on another man like that. But not us, though. We love it. I don't be peeing swing back around the other side. They don't even look at stuff we look at no more. It's just bad. But see, you know what? We become so comfortable with society and the way society do things. Nobody thinks anymore. Nobody come back and look at nothing they do. I told y'all before, even we're going to Stone Mountain. Going to, y'all remember I told y'all about going to that mountain? How y'all just go out there and like run over top of that mountain? Nobody wanted to come from. That beautiful. What's on the front of that mountain? Who? Confederate? Thank you. Number idols. Monuments. That's all they are, monuments. They talked about us going to these people monuments. Sitting on top of their mummy, going like I told you, I sitting in front of Abraham. This is an idol. This is an idol. He told it they can't speak. They must need be carried. He didn't walk and sat down on his own. They sat there and built it and set him up. These are idols. These are the same thing he sat down and he condemned us about so many times, yet we go right back to the same behavior. We went right back up on this stuff, Mount Eagle, the whole thing. Ain't nothing but a lie. They told you the spaceship came and landed there. The daughters of Confederate and niggas go here for H Club. I don't care how many H, you don't need but one H to go to hell. And they worry about four of them. The run down these monuments, these idols, we can't go to everything these people got. He told you something is strange, you don't run to the same excess of ride. Guess what they gonna do? Speak evil of you. They ain't gonna speak evil of you, because you go everywhere they go. I got four here running the rain to go look at Lee's fall. In the cold, no gas. I got some of the dummy people on the planet. Because they mind. I like to go, why don't that move your heart and your mind to go do what he say do? Some of the stuff that move and motivate y'all to do stuff, it's scary. It's scary. Some of you just drive you to go and do it, and it just shows your disobedience, your willfulness, that you got to break. It's dangerous to be forward. It's, it's dangerous to be so forward. You got to be careful about something. That you got that same, you got your own mind, your own will that you won't break. That's dangerous. That's, dangerous. That's why we had to be chasing. We had to be chased out. Even the candy Yahushua told I seen him. He said he went on for it anyway. He said, but I'm going to heal him. He chastised him for it too. You got to be broken of that mindset. A lot of y'all got bad mindset, bad concept. I said, some of y'all groups, I don't tell you before, I know y'all groups. We straggling. Frail, lying and deceptive. I know y'all groups. I see y'all. You see straight through you. Ain't them just like clear piece of paper, like saran wrap. Ain't that whole nothing looking through saran wrap. If you just pull it tight and look at it, it gonna pop. You gonna look straight through it like a like a piece of glass. It's time for us to buckle down. Make sure we got this thing right. Y'all got me. This man coming back here. The last thing you need to do is die, leave him, and go to hell. Last thing you need to do. And y'all need to be better friends with one another. Tell each other that. 
One person said I'm out. The rest of them. I mean, the pen, you don't want people to fall out with you. Fall where you want to want. You don't fall in the hell. You don't get it right. This your soul. Y'all hear me? This your soul. Who cares enough to tell you the truth about your soul? What makes a lot of people upset is what they need to hear. That's what you need to know. That's the problem now. You need to get people upset. Maybe they get upset, they'll do something different. They don't get upset. That's why they don't think, don't consider. Nobody's saying that about what I'm doing, so it must be all right. Got to get them upset enough, they at least going to consider. If they got any sense, they'll get upset. They'll think about, you know what? I'm just getting set for now. I need to get my behind right. I need to tighten my behind up. This is that being honest. I know why a lot of y'all friends. It ain't hard to tell why a lot of y'all are him friends. It's really not. It's real easy to tell why. Because you're in the same hell hole. You got the same excuses. You got the same dumb, stupid behavior. It all makes sense. Y'all got me? So we got to try to transfer what we're doing. Let's look at the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I ain't going to hold y'all too long. How many of y'all want to be in that meeting? I had some hands. Good. My next, move, my next move to get rid of some of y'all. I get people want to be saved. Ephesians 5 and 1. Listen. Be ye therefore followers of Allahim as, what, what? as dear children. And do what? Son? And walk in love. And walk in love. As Mashiach also hath loved us, and, did what? and hath given himself for us, uh, for an offering and a sacrifice to Allahim, for a what? sweet smelling savor. We're talking about the Savior, sweet smelling Savior, the aroma. That's what we look at too with our behavior. And what we do, we look at the aroma. It could be a stink in his nostril. We're talking about the aroma, especially from the obedience. Mm. Knowing your father and doing what you say, sweet, but when you ain't, it's a stench. It's like a stink in the it's like, smell that, like somebody farted or something, or like something died. You know, smell, smell like something dead. You could, that's, how it feel, that's how it is with him. Hey, look, all your works to me are dead. They're dead. It stinks. It's rotting in my nostrils. So we start to look at him. Listen. But fornication mm -hmm. and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once be, let it not be once named among you. And? As becometh consecrated. Y'all hear that? As becoming consecrated. What else, son? Neither filthiness. They ain't got no business being nasty. Heifer. One person said a man. I can't give it one person. Well, everybody don't like they want to say it for her. Hey, you know how the other one out? What's wrong with a, a mot? A mot. A mot is a mot. What's wrong with y'all? Now you're hollering, nigga. Hey, the other word, the devil. <laughs> that right, even they that. That's it. He like wham out. That's yeah, right, they they gonna get it. We gotta get on page. Y'all know why behavior don't change? Cause we comfortable. We hide ourselves. There. We don't want to get involved. We don't want people to get upset, and we want people to go to hell. I really tell you the truth. You get upset, you gonna go to hell. Then, then you go to hell. And I didn't tell you. And I had, the, and I had the voice. And I had the vision to go in and let you know you're wrong, so you can get right. Now you go to hell. Not done told you. Then you go ahead and go to hell. But it's bad for you to go to hell if I didn't warn you. That's the bad part. You weren't warned. That's the problem now. If you've been warned, you can go ahead and go to hell. Like a lot of people that run their mouth about me, they can go ahead and go to hell. Because they've been warned. You hear me? I'm only here to warn you. It's just like that gap on the toe. Don't smoke at this pump. Cut your car. Now, if it blow up, that sign ain't going to change. That sign ain't going to say, oh, my God, what happened? They saw it. They read it. They read it. Boom, boom, nigga. That's all the sign. Boom, boom, nigga. You heard it. You read what this sign said. Now, you go ahead and you keep being stupid. You blow up at this pump, that's what you cut your car. Don't smoke. Get away from it. But you, yeah, bam, that's you. Huh? And you're a detriment to everybody around you. Am I? All right. Listen. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. What that sign? Nor jesting. That's where we got that jesting. What is jesting? Foul cursing. Foul language. Dirty jokes. It can actually be idle tales to sit around lying. You know, acknowledge everything these people give you. Gotta watch a lot of stuff these people give you. 
They give you a lot of language, a lot of stuff. But what we want to do, we talked about before. When you look at the word profanity, I'm going to get it right. I ain't expecting Is that it? Some of y'all know it. Cuss it. It means to, what y'all think profanity means? Something sacred. Too profane. For, to for to go against something sacred. To go against it. something sacred. It's, that would be it. Actually, when people say you're saying, uh, speak of profanity, you're saying you're saying stuff that's not sacred. We just automatically take when people say what's cursing. And as Zach has said a couple of times on what cursing is, it wouldn't be using the word damn or the, some words I don't use. I don't just say the shit them word with Dr. Tim on it. I use it because I take and it is funny, but I can attach it to scripture. The ass I can attach to scripture to damn MF. Because one thing, if you're not a person that having thrust in a mother, it's not going to fit you anyway. A bastard going to fit you. If you were born out of wedlock or you illegitimate with your whore. Y'all got it? I know a lot of oh, he cussed. But you just got to go back and look at what you're saying. If I tell you, y'all damns you, I'm pronouncing a curse on you. That's pronouncing a curse. Y'all hear me? I'm pronouncing that y'all condemns you. Y'all hear me? That y'all holds you up. That's what I'm asking him to do. Y'all got me? I wouldn't tell God to do it because I don't believe God has the authority. Y'all hear me? I would be building again those things which I tear down, which would make me a transgressor. Now what we have to do as well with what we learn and what we're teaching, and starting with myself, is using the wisdom when we use different sayings and words, because we don't want these kids to take things out. When we go out and deal with these people out here, they're not as contoured as we are with the knowledge of what we're doing. And because we have knowledge of things, knowledge can also be dangerous. Y'all hear me? Electricity is beautiful how it lights these buildings and how it illuminates this building. If you take that electricity and just let it loose and have no conductor upon it or nothing to restrain it, it can be very dangerous. You could burn this building down. It's a lot of damage you can do. You could take out this whole block. That's a lot of damage. You could burn out circuit boards. A lot of stuff you can happen. And our goal of what we're actually trying to do is to make sure that we try to uh, give something that's going to be edifying to the hearer so people don't lose consciousness of why you're here. Not that the words are, as they would say, uh, uh, would be foul language. It's the fact that so many people have already been kind of mentally set a certain way, and our goal is to try to save everybody. Y'all got me? That's our goal. Come on. Come on. Good, good. Come on, finish this up. No adjusting, which are not convenient. But what? But Why would you be get... sitting around lying? So it's not convenient, but rather giving a thanks for this ye know that no poor monger who is what nor unclean person who is a who nor covetous anus who is an idolater see that idol worshiper hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Mashiach and of Elohim. For what happened? Let no anus deceive you with vain words. Because for because of these things cometh the wrath of Elohim. Upon the children of disobedience. Y'all see that? We gotta look at it. For everybody here, we gotta look at why so many things coming on you. You're disobedient. Y'all hear me? For everybody in here, if you look at situation thing happening on you, it's because you're disobedient. And now we gotta learn how to come back and we gotta try to try to come back and rectify some things. At Second Corinthians chapter ten. If it's ten about four. Listen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Allahim. See that? Talking about our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through Allahim to the pulling down of strongholds. Doing what else? Casting down imaginations. I know a lot of you still deal with sexual um, innuendos, different things you deal with and struggles that you might have, but you got to learn how to cast down imagination. You can't let everything come in your mind become a concept, a seed that sprout and come up, and you wind up acting upon. Everybody got things coming. It'll come to my mind and say, kill everybody in the room. I'm going to do it. Cast it down. And then I'm, oh, I'm going to go to hell. I just thought about killing everybody in the room. Cast it down. 
I can't let everything come in my mind come up and have a controlling factor. That's supposed to be the different one. There's a lot of stuff that come to your mind. You can't act there on everything you do. You see a guy say, that's a, that's a nice looking young man. I, uh oh, I want to have, I got to go have sex. Well, I just say, now you're an idiot and you're a fool because this makes no sense. Isn't that right? When things come, you got to know what to catch. Now, that's a nice looking young man. Right, keep going. That's a nice looking, I want him. Cast it down. And matter of fact, don't come back on that problem. Isn't that right? Because we don't want that happening again. Isn't that right? We don't want you to cut that for your safety. <laughs> a mot. Yeah. But this, I was just actually using that as kind of, you know, figuratively speaking. But again, we want to try to make sure that we're conscious of different things. Things can come in your mind. You got to cast down. Y'all got me? And what else, son? And every high thing that that dove what? exalteth itself against the knowledge of Allahim. For what happened? And bringing into captivity what? every thought to the obedience of the Mashiach. See, that's what we're looking at. You have thoughts about a whole lot of different things, but now you got to start looking at does it line up with the obedience that he called for us to do. Hold you got Kuf 114. Allah. Kuf. Allah. Allah, Kuf 114. Listen. As obedient children. See that? He just talked about it. Now, what are we going to learn about that? Well, Shaul already just gave us some insight on it. All right. Listen. As obedient children. Not. Fashioning yourselves. According to what? To the form of lust in your ignorance. See, now we got to look at it. We just talked about casting down our imagination. Those lusts are strong, urge desires. It ain't just got to be for sex. It can be for other things that are contrary to the doctrine. Y'all hear me? Got to bring it down. The lust of men, the desire to try to please men. A lot of times we get caught up in there trying to be men pleasers. So we got to put away all these different things. And the way you're going to do it is through being obedient. What he asked us to do actually is going to put you in a dire stress because it's going to teach you to constrain or to restrain yourself. Y'all got me? It's a constraint behavior by restraining. Y'all got me? And abstaining from idolatry. That's why a lot of things we don't go to. We don't function in. Because we're trying to, by abstaining and being constrained, it contains. Y'all got me? That's what we're trying to do because, the, 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 in a sense, you, and I don't want to use trick as though it's magic or whatever, but just saying trick. Sometimes people say we're trying to grasp certain things. They say, what's well, a technique? Or sometimes people might use the, the phrase, it's a trick to it. And sometimes when people hear trick, they all may think something deceptive to something. There's a technique. The first technique is to obtain. Then to contain. Y'all right? got me? Because you got to be able to hold it. That's going to be your whole problem. Can you keep it once you got it? Y'all got me? Like when you're cold, when the Malachi came, he was able to catch it and contain it. He was able to keep it. Y'all all right? And agreed. I ain't letting it go until he blessed me. That's what a hip out of joint. Anytime, anybody, you don't wrestle, you get somebody hurt, so you, whatever hole you got, it's time to let that go. Mm -hmm. You got this. Mm -hmm. If somebody put you in something hurt and something out of play, no, no, we're not finna keep this up. We good. You got this right now. I'm thinking about how I'm feeling. But your coach taught us, no, I got to hold on for a blessing. A lot of us in here are guilty of letting go. It ain't even a dire situation. You think something just pop. Me, you sit here doing the hyper, just, just hyper, you might just use for a second. So hop in my. This is me, you don't just locked up. And I feel like something pop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, no, no, he got my now. Come on, come on. Listen, no, not because I'm thinking about it. I something pop. I need to go and tend to this. I need to make sure this is fixed before anything else happens. Now you're cold. I'm gonna hold on to you. Bless me. We have been guilty of letting go. Because marriage. I should have had somebody ain't got nobody. Why things ain't open up for me? Seem like I'm in the same place. All these little different things we use as, as we say, scapegoats. Something else we can put the blame on and then let it go. 
Scapegoat. They learned that from our law. That's what Yahushua was scapegoat. See, the purpose of the scapegoat was you're going to take what everybody else did, put it on that one goat, and put your hands on it and pronounce it on that goat. That's cursing. And let it go. That's why the book told her with Yahushua, he became a curse for you and I. That was the purpose of why they came and they struck him. Do y'all know? Because he was the scapegoat. You should have been up there. And you ought to be up there right now. But the scapegoat. Hmm? So now we're trying to come back to look at where the problem comes in is people weren't changing just like they're not now. Because if somebody else can bear the blame for it, then pretty much I'm still good. But had you gotten your fault like you needed to, maybe you'll change. It's the truth. As long as somebody else buys, somebody come in here and they'll assume I just stole something. They come in and run it right quick and lock Cam up and run him out of here. Say they guilt, they got everything he got. Him. I'm saying, I'm good. Because Cam got in Cam. Cam ain't even going to fight it. He's just going to go ahead and take it and go. Then I feel like I'm still good. I'm not even a thief. Because technically, they feel like he got it. So I'm still good to keep stealing. That's where we've taken the wrong concept then when it comes down to Yahushua. We should have looked at, you know that should have been you. You know you're guilty, and you ought to confess it, but you won't. But then somebody else paid the price, and you felt like they paid it, so you keep doing the same thing. What happened with him is kind of what happened with us sometimes. Anybody have known kids growing up that had money, parents had money, had, they wound up doing a lot of stuff, like getting in a lot of trouble doing it. Anybody know a lot of times why they do it? Because their parents can pay for it. Their parents always cover for it. No matter where they are, they can run up and cover it. They're going to take I had a friend like, listen, they kicked him out. They did expulsion, kicked him out of school. His daddy came right back, paid, and got him right back in there. He threatened the teacher, he's going to kill him. He said, I got it behind out of here, expulsion. That joke right back up there. That kid, there's a white woman he threatened. His dad spent good money. All through life, that's all he did. He raked the car one time. His dad bought him a Seville, Cadillac Seville. We was in the eighth grade. Drove down the street in it. Pulled his pan down, tried to moon somebody. He was driving, wrecked it. Then he had a driver's license. When everybody had bicycles and little mini bikes, his dad bought him a motorcycle in the field grade. So all he ever did was seeing stuff just come his way. He just grew to be a rotten kid. Daddy would pay for anything he did. It made no difference what happened. Daddy paid for it. Daddy buying the whole time, just give him and buying, give him and buying. And all he did was just made it for a rotten man. You know what I'm saying? But in, if you look at it, that's the same thing happened to us, though. Dad have been taking care of us all our life. Dad have been covering for all our life. There people in here should be, how many of y'all in here should have, been, should have gone to jail? Should have been in prison now. But somebody paid the price. Daddy covered you. How many of us in here should be dead right now? But daddy covered. That's, that's what a good father does. He sees his kid in trouble, what he do? Run, take care, get to the aid of, don't want to see him gone. We're willing to let it fall on him. Then the beat said, listen, don't lie, my kid. Let me do it. I'd rather I go to jail than my child. If you tell me I'm going to kill everybody, I'd rather you kill me than my child. That's what he did for us. Let's look at the book of Yeshua Yahoo. Finish that up for me right quick. Yeshua Yahoo. Finish that up, Olive. Cuff, Olive 114. Yeshua Yahoo. 96. Listen. But as he which has called you is Kadash. So be ye Kadash in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye Kadash, for I am Kadash. You hear that? Not Kodash. 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 For the Kuf. That's the ancient for the Kuf. Y'all all right? Listen. And if you call on the Abba, who without respect of persons judges according to every Anus's work. Y'all hear that? If you call on him, who without what? Who without respect of persons what? judges according to every Anus's work. See that? That's what we look at. That's how he judged, according to every man's work, without respect to person. Y'all hear me? 
That's how they look at it. They'll tell you how judgment is blind. Y'all heard them terminology before? That's amazing to tell you stuff like that. Look at when they came down to uh, Yasakut. They came down to him giving out the birthright. You do know he couldn't see. He just judged according to his word. The smell. The aroma. Hmm? The behavior. I know what I call for. Make me that venison that I love, that savory meat. I love. That's what he made. He made it for him. He covered himself, having had, and I did it according to his word. Huh? Whether he's supplanting or not, I judge without respect to person. If I had seen, there was no way he would have got it. Because I judged according to a man's word. Then guess what? He wound up getting it. And that's what you want. A lot of us here, we're trying to change our word. We are rightly called your cold. Y'all hear me? Yashra'al, we're rightly called because we supplanted. We took somebody else's birthright. Birthright is something that belongs to that person. Y'all got me? We taking it. We taking on a life that don't belong to us. Y'all got me? But in order for you to maintain, then you're going to have to illustrate some or demonstrate. Y'all got me? You're going to have to demonstrate a continual pattern of behavior. Y'all got me? Everybody, but what you've done, you've done enough. It's just enough to fool yourself and others around you, but you won't fool all. That's been a lot. Y'all have done enough to fool people in here. You ain't fooling nobody. You can see the lie in your eyes. Now y'all you know, you know know ain't bust some done scams. Scams and flim flam. You got to change your heart. Change your mind. That's just being honest. Every stuff going to come all the time. I don't like it. Uh, don't feel my bed. Whatever it is. Ain't going to change my obligation. That's just bottom line. My obligation don't change. Regardless, it does not change. That's what I want from everybody else to him. That's what he's calling for. Come on, let's look at uh, uh, Yeshayahu 9 and 6. Oh, brother, you don't get me Mick, y'all? 6 and 6. Listen. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a being is given. What's going to happen? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. See that? The rule going to be on his shoulder. What happened? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor Allahim, the Everlasting Abba, the Ruler of Shalom. What happened? Of the increase of his government and Shalom, there shall be no end. So, come on. Upon the throne of Dawood, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. Listen. Yahuwah sent a dabari into Yacob, and it hath lighted upon Yasharal. Yeah. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. Mm -hmm. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, Yahuwah shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together. Mm. That's all. You don't turn down for a reason. That's the main thing we look at. We try to go back and you don't put back. You turn down for a reason. A lot of times we're going to go back and try to put up something better than what we had before. A lot of these idols and a lot of stuff we got, we got them right here in our heart. He told us that in the book of uh, Yucazia. He asked about us inquiring of him. He said, should I all be inquired by these people? He said, your idols, you don't set them up in your heart. A lot of y'all, you will set your heart so affixed to something that you won't change. You will let somebody else or a situation, a marriage, a relationship, or no relationship a job, or whatever it might be, a mental defect, or whatever you might make up your mind. A lot of y'all mental illness in here is created yourself. A lot of people just create mental illness. Some stuff is just not even fast. You just need people long enough. These people tell you anybody got a mental problem. Yep. Everybody in here got a thought process that's going to be different if you ask somebody else, depending on what day it is. Ain't nobody sitting around telling my mental illness. If you get up in the morning putting your done shoes on your feet, ain't nothing wrong with you, nigga. And that right? You piss in a toilet and not in your clothes. You ain't that crazy. Isn't that right? You mess in that toilet. You don't dip your hand and eat out of it and you flush it and wipe your behind. You ain't crazy. 
in there, right? If folk can't wipe their behind, and them people got mental illness. I'm pissing their clothes, just keep standing and keep going. You know, good and done well. You run your behind that bathroom before you mess your clothes up, then you know what you're doing. Yep. So, like you see a baby, child come, you know, that, that, that. You're like, what's wrong with you? I'm messing yourself. You said, you know it don't feel right. Come on, I'm going to beat your behind. When they get the plan and keep going, how they get it, you be like, you realize they don't know no better. Kids just running, playing all happen, just stinking. You said, they don't even smell this. You ain't going to beat that. You feel like, kid don't know. That kid start doing stupid, looking stupid. Like, <laughs> Isn't that right? Walking funny. What's wrong with you? What, you done messed that. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. come on. I got you. Beat that behind, too. That's what you do. Wipe them, clean them up, and whoop that behind real good. They start realizing it definitely don't feel too good. Y'all hear me? That's the same thing he want to do to us. Catch you in that condition, clean you up, and whip you up behind so you learn not to do it. That's the whole purpose of the teacher. We all had to be correct, even had to be corrected. So you learn to get out of the situation. Y'all got me? That situation that you're in conducive to damnation. Y'all got me? They're like a child landing field. Now y'all grow to be filthy adult. Maybe y'all, if your parent would have whooped you behind you, mess, you wouldn't be on a mess now. I watch some of y'all, some stuff y'all don't even make sense. It don't. Hey, gentlemen, I don't want to smell like no piss. I don't want to smell like no doing no back booty mess. I clean myself. I don't want to just do it physically. I want to make sure on the, from the rule concept that I'm keeping myself. Y'all hear me? Because it's a behavior. It's a conduct. It's a mannerism. We want to try to make sure we maintain when we know that's what we want to walk in. So what are we looking at? We're looking at what was given us. A child was given us. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. At the book of Micah 6 and 6. The government going to be on his show. He going to have the rule. Think about this. If your child be president, what that mean for you? That's the good life. You good. Your kid, what kid ain't going to take care of their parents? A good kid. A child. What, good, what child with position? Your kid go make millions of dollars. What that mean for you, your parents? Unpaid. Somebody say, I don't know. Yo, go on, you're right. That's my, that'd be like, that's my money. I'll sign that for you right here. Yep. Like, nigga, you know how much you owe me out there? If my kid made, anyone make $100 million, they should get at least $32 when I get finished. <laughs> like, you know how much y'all messed up and tore up? All the three of mine on red call. They don't even know how much them rates cost. So you look at it, when I get through them checks, whatever money they make it like, just go ahead and just endorse the back of it. You don't even need I'll give you back what's right. What's up, right? I'll pay it. And I'll give you what's right. Ain't that right? I ain't gonna do like that nine, that, that uh, what that uh Shirley season. For the nine months I carried you, hold you inside me, no charge, nigga, pay up. <laughs> Mama throwing up and sick, fat, no spread, look like that thing going around her head like a hula hoop. Give me that check. You study smile, that thing was study spread. How many of y'all white hair bad pregnancy? Tell me that thing, yeah. I'm trying to, man, y'all kid rough up a nigga face. They didn't need that money for plastic surgery. <laughs> Isn't that right? I had to fix her face. Listen. Wherewith shall I come before Yahuwah and bow myself before the high Allahim? What happened? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves of a year old. What happened? Will Yahuwah be pleased with thousands of rams? Yeah. Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? What happened? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? The what is it? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. You already just heard what you were getting. Told us under us a child was born. Under us a being was given. And the government going to be upon his shoulder. So I'm talking about the increase and in all those things. We're looking at, well, I mean, I'm good. I just give him. Is that what you're going to try to use? You give him for the sin of your soul? What happened? He hath shewed thee, O Anus. What is good? What's what is Ta'u? See, what's Ta'u? And? What doth Yahuwah require of thee? To do what? But to do Sadak. See, that, that's what he want. You still got to do Sadak. That's the problem. We keep putting all the ability on him. Him coming, him being offered for us, should have given you some ability. Can I hear me? See, there are some characteristics we should have been looking for. And with those characteristics, there were signs that things had happened. Y'all get me? There are signs that were given to us. Y'all hear me? The opt. Y'all all right? What we looked at? His sign? The opt? We should look for his sign. 
which is his sign. The second art would have been a sign, right? We kind of just try to separate so it look like just a sign, a sign. Um, let's hear it again. I, I mean, hear that, but to do Sadat. But to do Sadak yeah. and to love mercy. And to love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy Allahim. And to walk humbly for thy Allahim. Yahuwah's voice crieth unto the city. And what happened? And the Anus of wisdom shall see thy name. Y'all hear that? The men of wisdom gonna see his name. Let's look at something. Um mm -hmm. Matiyahu. Twenty-seven. I'm trying to hold y'all on tonight. Twenty-seven thirty-eight. Um, before you get me that, get me. Um, matter of fact, get me. Um, who? All are shemut. Ten. And 17, I'm going to get me um, a moose, a moose, five, 17, I'm going to get me a moose, eight, how do y'all work it out, bro? Same person might stay on a moose, eight, and... One, we'll drop down and we'll make that work. Come on, let's work this out. Listen. Uallah Shamut? Yes. Please. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once. Y'all hear this? Mm-hmm. And entreat Yahuwah, your Allahim, that he may take away from me this death only. Mm. Y'all hear what Pharaoh asked for? He told him to do what, Brandon? Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin, only this once. Y'all pay attention. He wanted to forgive his sin this once. And do what? And entreat Yahuwah, your Allahim. I want you to treat Yahuwah, your Allahim. That he may take away from me this death only. Y'all hear that? So he can take away from me this death only. What happened, son? And he went out from Pharaoh mm -hmm. and entreated Yahuwah. What happened? And Yahuwah turned a mighty strong west wind. Mm -hmm. which took away the locusts and yeah. cast them into the Red Sea. Yeah. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart. He hardened his heart. So that he would not let the children of Yasharal go. What happened? And Yahuwah said unto Masha, what did he tell Stretch him? out thine hand toward Shamayim, yeah. that there may be a kashak over all the land of Mitzrayim. Y'all see what he wanted to have? He wanted a kashak to come over all the land of Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. Even kashak, which may be felt, Y'all hear that? Such a thick darkness. You could even feel it. So dark like you could touch it. What happened? And Masha stretched forth his hand towards Shamayim. Yes. And there was a thick kashak in all the land of Israim. Mm -hmm. Three Yamim. Where? They saw not one another. What happened? Neither rose any from his place for three Yamim. Mm. That's it. At the book of Amos 5 and 17. I guess the same one get um, a moose eight or however y'all want to work it out. I don't know how y'all do it. I'm going to have me eight and one. Then y'all got Matiyahu, 27, 35, 38. Listen. And in all vineyards shall be wailing. Y'all hear this? In all vineyards shall be wailing. For I will pass through thee, saith Yahuwah. What happened? Woe unto you that desire the yum of Yahuwah. Listen. To what end is it for you? He want to know what, what is it going to be for you? What happened with it? The yum of Yahuwah is Kashak uh -huh. and not Aura. Y'all hear that? It's Kashak and not Aura. What happened? As if a Anus did flee from a lion yeah. and a bear met him what happened? or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. And who bid him? A serpent bid him. What happened? Shall not the yum of Yahuwah be Kashak and not Aura. 
even very kashak and no brightness in it. Goodness. All right, at the eighth chapter. Hold on, got me Machu Yahoo 27, 40, 38. Listen. Thus hath Yahuwah Elohim shewed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. He just got through talking about he's going to go through the vineyard. When he going to go through in the winter? Ain't nothing going to be there in the winter. It's going to be in the summertime. Only time going to make sense to come through there is when the people going to be there. They're going to come in during the harvest. That's when you can expect me to be there during the harvest. Now go, he said, in all the vineyards. Nobody going to be in the vineyards in the wintertime. Now come, you're going to be there. Listen. And he said, Amus, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. And what did he tell him? Then said Yahuwah unto me, yeah. the end is come upon my people of Yasharal. What time is it going to be then? I'd be so calm. Hey, if it's the end, that means you're not going to gather no more. What you going to do then? I will not again pass by them anymore. See that? Again means I've already been through. Not this time. When I come through this time, I'm not going to just pass by. Listen. And the songs of the temple shall be what? Ika in that yum. Gonna be howling. Come on. Saith Yahuwah Elohim. Yeah. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. Mm. Come on. They shall cast them forth with silence. Listen. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the Kadash moon? be gone and? that we may sell corn yeah. and the Shabbat that we may set forth wheat making the ephah small and, and the shekel great listen. and falsifying the balances by deceit. See that? Tell me how we doing it. Start scamming and flim flamming. Listen. Tip the scale. Come on. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes. Mm. Amazing. He, gets, he busted y'all, huh? You forgot you paid for your hushu? 30 pieces of silver. He told you the fox had a hole, the birds of the air had nests. He said, but he had nowhere to lay his head. That'll make him poor. And you wind up buying it for a piece of silver. Listen. Yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. See so that the stuff that's refused. Stuff that ain't no good. You're gonna go and you're gonna try to sell it. Listen. Yahuwah hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their works. See that? I ain't gonna never forget it. Listen, y'all have what you got? So if he don't swore he ain't gonna forget it, he people in trouble. Why would he be on the two time I forgive them? He just said I, I ain't gonna never forget it. All right. Come on. Shall not the land tremble for this? See that? That's why the land shook. Come on. And every one mourn that dwelleth therein. How? Talk to me. And it shall rise up wholly as a flood. He was talking about how the dead were going to come up. The body of the, of the dead uh, consecrated ones, they got up from the tomb. It's just like water rising up. Because he described the people as Mayim. They're going to rise up wholly as a flood. Think about all, all, the, dead, all the dead consecrated ones getting up walking the, whole, walking the city of Jerusalem. What you think people had to be thinking for all these people that got up from the grave and they don't walk the street? He said, they rose up whole, totally like a flood. Listen. And it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Mizraim. Listen. And it shall come to pass in that yum, saith Yahuwah Elohim, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the Aritz in the clear yum. Hmm. At the 27th chapter. Matayahu 27, 38. Other brother, you don't get me. I'll try to finish this up over here somewhere. Fourteen. 
Listen. It's Matiyahu. Matiyahu 27, um, 38. Listen. I don't got me Colossians 2, 14. Listen. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, yeah. one on the right hand and another on the left. Mm. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three yamim. What did he tell them to do? Save thyself. Save who? Save thyself. Listen. If thou be the Ben of Allahim, yeah. come down from the two. And what happened? Likewise also the Rosh Kohan mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Him. Self he cannot save. What else happened? If he be the Malak of Yasharal, mm -hmm. let him now come down from the two, and we will believe him. Listen. He trusted in Allahim. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Ben of Allahim. Yeah. The thieves also which were crucified with him, Cast. the same in his teeth. Yeah. Now from the sixth hour there was Kashak over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yosha cried with a loud voice, saying, What happened now, Batman? What happened? Now from the sixth hour, there was Kashak over all the land until the ninth what, hour. What time is the sixth hour? What they were called noon. Okay. Until the ninth hour. Until the ninth hour, which would be about what? About three. What happened? And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice, saying, Ol Yahu, Ol Yahu, Lama Sabatana. That is to say, my Allahim, my Allahim, why hast thou forsaken me? That's beautiful. Jump over and give me Colossians chapter 2 at verse 14. Um, you hold me, um, Yahshua Yahu 44 and by verse 19. Listen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. What happened now? Give me verse 13. What did he say? And you being dead in your sins. Y'all hear that? Y'all remember that. Now you being dead where? In your sins. What happened? And the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Y'all paying attention to this? That don't mean nothing to y'all do it. Okay. You said a mot. It don't mean nothing to you, uh, John. I said, I don't mean until he said a mot. Didn't he say a mot? <laughs> he said, no. Okay. No, it don't mean he said a mot. Truth, it don't mean that to me. No, it don't mean that to me. Don't worry. Take your time. And now he did better with that A other man, didn't it? Don't worry about it. Listen. Read that 13 verse again. That's significant, though. Listen. And you, and he what? being dead in your sins, going to hold it rise up like a flood. Listen. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. Hath he quickened together with him. Quickened mean made alive. Uh-huh. With him. Come on. Having forgiven you all trespasses. See that? Having forgiven you all trespasses. Listen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way. Doing what? Nailing it to his tooth. See, the first thing people start looking at, he took and got rid of the law, which would make no sense. He took away a debt that you had. You had a debt. And what he did was he took that debt out of the way. That's why you should have paid attention to the statement he just made. He told you about him blotting it out. It was contrary to you. So what he did, he just took it out of the way and had forgiven you of that debt. So don't even worry about it. You know, go ahead. I'm just go ahead, and we're gonna forget that whole debt. I'm just gonna blot that whole debt out. It was contrary, and what I'm going, I'm gonna debt it. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe it out of the way. We had to quicken you and make you alive, and he had to get rid of some things first. And in doing it, that's what came to give us life. Let's see what Yeshua Yahu told us. It is kind of concluded out for us. Yeshua Yahu 44 and 19. See if it puts some uh, order on it. Yes, Yahoo, 44, verse 14. Listen. I'm sorry, verse 19. Listen. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. You hear that? Come on. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. Yeah. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. Mm -hmm. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? <laughs> Come on. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Mm -hmm. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, Listen. that he cannot deliver his soul 
Yes, nor say. So he can't even deliver his soul or say. Listen. Is there not a lie in my right hand? Listen. Remember these, O Yaakov and Yasharal. Yeah. For thou art my servant. Y'all hear what he told you? Remember this, Yaakov. For thou art my servant. What happened? I have formed thee. I did what? I have formed thee. I brought thee, formed thee, created thee, made thee. What has happened? Thou art my servant. And you are my servant. What that mean for me, Brandon? O Yasharal. Yeah. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. See that? And he said on the two, he had forsaken him. He said, you won't be. I have forgot about you. Tell him what else, Brandon. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. A dog cloud. That's why I need to be dog. You need to see it. That's what I did. That's how bad your transgression. I had to make it real dog. It had to be so dog. Couldn't be no brightness in it. To get rid of it. In order to cover it up, it had to be thick dog. Dog that could be felt. Hmm? How much? In order for me to get rid of it, so it made sense now. You heard him just make that statement, huh? You that were dead in your sins, he quickened together with him. Huh? Being dead in your sins and having blotted out. So like a thick cloud. So like a dark cloud. That's why I was dark. I was blotting out your transgression. Trying to cover up your iniquity. But we missed that too, didn't we? So you see a lot of things had to be done. Even going back and looking at Mizraim, how dark it was. No man moved out of their place for three years. Y'all mean? Y'all didn't pay attention to what he asked for, did he? He asked him to pray to his Allahim for his transgression and that he died not. That's why you ain't dead. You didn't realize what was going on for you, did it? Pharaoh had enough sense to know what was going to happen. I don't want to die. Pray to your Allahim. Huh? Pray to your Allahim for me that I die not. That he'll forgive me my iniquity. Well, what was the sign going to be? He, that's why I told you about the arch. The same thing he told you in the seventh chapter of the book of Yeshayahu. He told you to ask me for an art in the Shamaim or in the Aris. The cloud came from Shamaim, but it covered all the way down to the Aris. That's how we know it was his sign, and it was a sign. It was a sign for letting her know I blocked. He done told us, my servant, Yashra. So I done blotted out your transgressions, just like a thick cloud. So you how important it was for us, or how important it is for us to know the Dabarim? A lot of times people go around saying their sins forgiven or saying things have changed for them, and they really don't have any real proof or evidence of what they're stating. They're just saying for their own sake, conscious statement in your heart, you know you're not right. I hold in us being here to make sure we right. We want him to create us a clean heart and renewing us the right ruach. That's good. Come on. Come on.